Hi everyone. Uh, as you can see, I am holding up a John Sir custom carved top, as well as a Tom Anderson drop top. And I'm going to go through really comparing both of these head to head on very uh, technical uh, issues, build, design, feel, uh, and also some playability stuff. And so uh, let's get into it. Let's start by looking at the spec sheets. On the left, I have uh, the Sur uh, spec sheet, and on the right, I have the Anderson. I tried to stick primarily to like the default selections for most of the things, making only a couple of changes here and there. The most significant difference being the Sur is a carved top with a basswood body, and the Anderson is a drop top with a alder body. They're both strat style bodies with maple necks and rosewood fretboards. Uh, the width of the neck is 1 and 11 uh, sixteenths or 1.687 inch. They have stainless steel frets and locking tuners. Electronically they're rather different, the Sur being an HSH type uh, guitar and the Anderson being an uh, HSS type guitar. The Sur has an SSH plus in the bridge, an FL middle, a single coil in the middle, and an SSV in the neck. Uh, both humbuckers are splittable by pulling up on the tone, and the Anderson has a uh, H2 plus in the bridge, an SA1 in the middle, and an SA1R in the neck, and it has their standard five-way switching. There's another video. I did about that uh, and you can watch that for more information about how the Anderson 5-way switch works. Moving on to the bridges, the Sur has the Godo 510 two-post saddle uh, with the steel blocks and the Anderson has their vintage two-post tremolo. To me, they seem practically identical. They seem to behave the same. Uh, they look almost identical. So I don't know if there's an uh, advantage of one over the other. They're pretty identical bridges. Now again with the tuning keys, the Sur, I, since I have a 2009 Sur, uses the Spurzel, Spurzel uh, locking tuning keys. Uh, Anderson has their own type of uh, tuning keys. They both give you a great degree of tuning stability and um, ease of string change. Um, an interesting thing to point out though is the Anderson does use a string tree while the Sur does not. I'm not sure what the benefits are, why one outweighs the other, but to me they both seem pretty identical. Now let's talk about the construction. These two guitars, in my opinion, are made by the two best boutique custom guitar makers in the United States today. And their products are head and shoulders above the rest. I have an American-made Fender. I have an American-made, a couple of American-made Gibsons, a Les Paul and a 339. And the construction of both of these are drastically noticeable compared to their Fender and Gibson counterparts. That said, let's talk about the neck joints because this is where we see, I, I would say, the biggest difference in construction between the two. The Sur has your uh, angled contoured heel similar to what you would see on a Warmoth guitar if you get the custom contoured heel and the Anderson has developed their own sort of neck pocket with a two bolt design. Uh, now there is a bit of a you know 10 year difference between the two guitars but over time as far as like the standard series on Sewer it hasn't really changed. And if we look closely at both of these neck joints and we measure them we can see the Sewer is about uh, two and five eighths uh, inches deep, 
Meanwhile, the Anderson is about two and a half inches deep. Now that's about one, that is one eighth of an inch difference between the two. But what really surprised me was it's quite noticeable when you're trying to make your way up to the upper frets uh, and playing in the upper frets. So if you do spend a lot of time in the upper frets, I'd say 17th fret and further, it does make a difference. The other difference between the neck joints is the sewer connects to the body in and around the 16th fret. Meanwhile, the Anderson connects again, uh, connects around the 17th fret. So once again, there's a little bit of an edge here with the Anderson as far as build and construction and design when it comes to upper fret access. But moving back to the overall construction of both of these guitars, uh, from these pictures you can see they really are constructed really amazingly well. You, uh, from how straight the neck is, to the action, to how they do the fret ends, both of these guitars are amazingly built. Um, and the attention to detail is second to none. Both of them really are great guitars. And one last thing about the construction and build of these guitars, the strap buttons. I know it's a small little minor thing, but I got to give the edge to Sir. I think Sir with their strap button is a little bit nicer than the kind of standard strap button that Anderson uses. Now, Anderson does something interesting on the bottom side of the guitar where they use two strap buttons. So this way, if you lean the guitar up against your amp or whatever, it's level. It's not uh, balancing on a single strap button at the middle of the uh, bottom of the guitar, which is uh, a nice addition. But um, as far as being able to take your guitar strap on and off, and you might even buy strap locks, uh, but out of the box, uh, opening the case, um, I would say that the Sur has a little bit of a nicer strap button than the Anderson.
yeah, so wrapping this up, it's really hard to go wrong with either the Sur or the Anderson. They're both amazing, well-built guitars. The Sur has, uh, the Sur carved top has a bit of elegance to it. I really do love the look of a carved top. The Anderson, you know, has a bit more uh, ease of playability as you get to the uh, upper frets. Uh, beyond that, they're both extremely playable. They play almost identically. Uh, the necks are kind of the standard uh, widths and uh, 1 and 11 sixteenths. The attention to detail, the tone of both of them, you guys can decide for yourselves which one you like better. Uh, I like them both. All right, if you like this video, uh, thanks for sticking around. Hit uh, like and subscribe, and hopefully you'll uh, stay tuned for my next video. Thank you.